I'm about to commit YouTube suicide. <laughs> She was so young with such a bright future. Why is she doing this? I am doing this because I really need to get this off my chest because it's detrimental to my health at this point. After watching BBC Three's Pathetic Excuse for a asexuality documentary, I have had such bad anxiety because I can't handle how tragic it is and that my freaking face is associated with it. Honestly, like my chest has felt tight. My heart has been racing, my hands have been shaking, I was, I, have, I haven't been able to sleep. I'm recording this video early in the day and I'm nocturnal. This is very unusual for me. This is, this is a, a symptom of how bad this documentary is. Because I know that I'm about to piss off the entire asexuality community so I might as well just kiss goodbye to my ace card right now. And I'm also probably about to piss off BBC. <laughs> one of the biggest corporations in the UK but you know what if you guys had done better I wouldn't have to say this so if you haven't already noticed if you're not one of the like 30,000 people who have seen this terrible terrible piece uh, BBC have just released a asexuality documentary called I don't want sex I'm gonna get to why I hate this title so much in a second and so to provide a bit of context I was contacted to be part of the UK Asexuality Conference 2018, which took place the day after London Pride. I was involved in that because I am a model and I came out on YouTube last year like a good millennial. I say came out, I came out publicly, it was kind of common knowledge to everybody else. And the video I made has been getting a lot of views, thank you guys for that. And since then I've been trying to use my platform to provide a bit of representation for asexual <laughs> asexual, asexual people in the media, particularly asexual black people because people really don't think we exist. And so I got involved in the conference. I was a speaker in two of the big talks that were going on. The entire thing was being filmed and I was also in correspondence with BBC Three who told me that they were going to be attending the conference and that they would love to interview me while I was there. And I was like, well, cool, because we're filming this whole thing anyway, so if you guys want to cover this event, that would be absolutely amazing, because honestly, that day was one of the best days of my life. Prior to that, I had never really hung out with other asexual people, and I was kind of worried that they would all be a bunch of weirdos, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> that probably sounds really bad, but you know, like, I thought they might just be a bunch of, t like, whiny Tumblr kids, and I was kind of worried, because... It's like I'm going around calling myself asexual and I'm going around saying, we're just normal people, come on. But I was like, what if we're not? What if we are just a bunch of like really sad weirdos? And while I was there, I was so happy to see like such a diverse range of people. Honestly, it was so beautiful. There was like every kind of person and every kind of asexual. More kinds of asexual than I knew that there was. There were people there who were like bankers, there were very successful people, there were young people, there were guys with babies, there were people from all over the world, there were black people, white people, Asian people, people with disabilities, transgender people, like heteroromantic, homoromantic, aromantic, and the conference, the people running the conference did such a good job at making sure that those people were represented in the panels, which is why I was so happy to be involved and we actually had an entire panel Panel on race and ethnicity and how that impacts your your asexuality and there was like a predominantly white crowd who was asking like how can we make our own community more intersectional and like the whole LGBTQAI plus community at large and it was just so beautiful and I thought this is the perfect thing for BBC Free to be capturing because this is the kind of thing that people need to see when they think of asexuality not just a bunch of like lonely confused kids and so one of the reasons why I was kind of bummed when I saw the finished product of this documentary, you're probably picking that up by now. I'm not saying that I have anything against the people in the documentary, I'm just saying I don't think that's the kind of representation that really stands for the entire community. Listen for it longer and you'll see why. So at the conference, they took us aside, we kind of sat in a circle and we had a really, really long, deep conversation about our different experiences, about our range of experiences, and it was so cool. I mean, okay, so with the exception of me and like one other person, I mean, it was a predominantly white group, but we still had like, it was diverse for an LGBTQIA thing, you know? Um, and it was just, it was so great. And we would 
and everyone was sharing different kinds of stories and positive and negative but one thing I picked up was you know that you can be asexual and still live a very happy fulfilling life and that's something that I was really getting from everybody and like we were just laughing and having a good time and then the producers would be like so the struggle tell me dating how hard is that for you and it would like totally like cut us like <laughs> Like we were just having like this really chill conversation and it'd be like a record screeching like oh um struggle um so we talk a little bit about that if people had experiences with that something people try to emphasize a lot is like oh yeah i'm actually in a relationship it's going fine or hey i'm aromantic quite a lot of people are we're fine too we exist and they're like uh-huh uh-huh but how bad is it though how bad is it even to the point where like we, and this kept happening, like we'd be talking about something and then they'd be like, so sex, how would it feel if you had to have it? If you had to, really, how would it feel? And I was thinking, what kind of questions are these? Like, just let us say that we're happy. I could already tell from like that moment that they had an angle that they were taking and that made me worried. And after the conversation, I was talking to other people that were there and they were saying they were also getting that vibe. And I was thinking, I hope to God that this isn't some like, collection of soft stories about how sad and like incapable we are and like how we're just a bunch of like social rejects and <laughs> that's what I got but right, here's something in the documentary you can see two scenes that are kind of mashed together and they make it look like it all happened at the same time the scenes where we were outside talking and the scenes where there are some people inside talking the part where the girl I forget her name Ashley if it's not Ashley I'm so sorry I'm just gonna call you Ashley um yeah, where she was like asking people for their numbers and stuff. That was a different scene. That was a different time of day. They put those together to make it look like it was the same thing. It wasn't. Um, and it really annoyed me because that was like, it was such a good part of the conference and they just drowned it out with such shallow, vapid stuff. And like, that's one of the things that really bugged me about this documentary. Like they were at the conference all day. They arrived when I arrived and I was there early in the morning. Pretty sure Ashley was there for the, the for the group talk as well. People were saying some really deep stuff at this conference. People were talking about some really dark stuff and some really beautiful stuff. And it was so empowering and it was so liberating and it was just like this really beautiful display. And BBC just decided to cut that into like one shallow piece about who's cute. Like the ending sentiment of this thing was, oh, there are some cute asexual people too. Ha ha ha. Like we have literally just sat here and like spilled out our hearts. Like this is some kind of freaking Alcoholics Anonymous. And all they get from it is, well, guess what? Some people here are cute. It's like, is that what you were picking up from this while we're sitting here? We're sitting around going, cute, not cute, cute, not cute, potential boyfriend material. <laughs> no, I'm insulted. And again, I'm not blaming the girl. She probably had more to say than that. But that's what they cut this into. Because all they care about is making some like sensational TV piece about how we can't get dates apparently. Because apparently, aromantic asexual people like myself do not exist. Even though we were on the freaking show, we don't exist. If you were want to watch this, you would not know that we existed. Because there was no mention of us. The whole thing was about dating. It completely fits into the same old narrative of a heteronormative society. I know they had homoromantic people on there. I don't give a damn. It was still all about romantic relationships. It was, it was, oh, I'm going to insult people right now. Prepare yourselves. It was the undateables for asexual people. It was the undateables, asexual edition, and I cringed so freaking hard. Even my mom was sitting there like, oh my God, my child is in this. And I was sitting there thinking, feel bad for me. It's my freaking face in this. I've been going around telling people that I'm in this really amazing documentary and it's a pile of trash. It's trash. I'm sorry, but it's trash. And I'm going to go into a bit more detail about why I think it's trash. So I got an email from the person who was doing the documentary and she was like, Hey, Yasmin, sorry I haven't been in touch, but like the documentary's out. I hope you like it. She didn't tell me what it was called. And I thought well, that's kind of weird because how am I supposed to find it? So I'm on BBC Free and I'm typing in asexuality, asexual, ace, anything? nothing nada and i thought well so i was trying to look up asexuality and learn more about it how the hell are they supposed to do that if it doesn't come up and then i saw what they called it i don't want sex what the f <clears throat> i don't want sex what the hell is that whose ingenious freaking idea was it to call it i don't want sex what the hell does that mean asexuality isn't synonymous with not wanting sex that documentary could be about anything. It could be about someone who's in a 
bad mood. Maybe it's that time of the month. Maybe you're abstinent. Maybe you're celibate. Like, that doesn't mean it's sexuality. And it's annoying because if you look at the other documentaries in the Sex Map of Britain thing or whatever the hell it's called, they have them called drag queens. And guess what it's about? It's about drag queens. They didn't call it men who wear makeup, man in a skirt. They called it drag queens. But they didn't call this anything to do with asexuality. They just called it, I don't want sex. Why? Why would you do that? And another thing that really disappointed me about it was the selection of people that they chose. As I was saying, this conference has such a wonderfully diverse range of asexual people. There was like so many diverse people they could have called upon to give them a moment in a supposed representative documentary and all they could pick was a bunch of young white kids. I'm sorry, I'm sure if you're a young white kid it was absolutely great to feel yourself represented, but I have higher standards. It's 20 freaking 18. Would it have killed you to get somebody else? Really? There was a whole panel on it! A freaking hour long panel! I was there! Like there was someone else there. There was a transgender Bangladeshi disabled guy there representing ticking every freaking box in the quota and you pick you pick these white kids there were people of different ages there there were people with children there were people who weren't just romantic people and this is what they chose i was so bummed i was so bummed <laughs> And again, I'm not knocking the people. It's great for you that you had this kind of opportunity. But if this is the first thing that people are going to see about asexuality, this is like a big documentary on a big platform. I want better. I want something that actually represents the community and not just the stereotypical group of shy white people. Come on, guys. Come on. Do, do, do. Don't even get me started on the execution. My heart, my soul was breaking as I watched this trash. Honestly, like... This, oh, I can't. Whose, whose freaking idea was it to get a guy, an asexual guy, to put him in a sex shop and go, I can see that you're looking uncomfortable. Are you feeling uncomfortable? It's very sexualized in here. No shit, you're in a sex shop, stupid. Why would you do that? Did you? They obviously did that just to get a reaction. Would you get a straight guy and put him in a, like a gay strip club and have a guy waving his dick in his face and be like, are you comfortable with this? Are you comfortable with these balls slapping against your mouth? Does that, does that bother you? Why would you do that? Why? And then just to, oh my God. And then like, I'm about to piss off some transgender people right now, but I don't care. In my opinion, asking asexual people about whether they masturbate is as inappropriate as asking a transgender person about their genitals. Okay, that's my opinion. I think it's very, very valid. Why? I don't understand why people care about whether asexual people masturbate or not. It's like they're just trying to test you to see whether they can kind of gauge your asexuality and see how deep into it you are and how much they should take it seriously. Otherwise, why would you ask? You never ask people that in general. And yet for some reason, people say they're asexual, they're not interested in sex. The first pe thing people ask is, well, what do you stick in your vagina though? You're jerking it off though? What kind of porn do you watch? You watch porn? Like, it's so, I find it so cringe. And they did that freaking twice. They had the guy in there, had him looking at freaking ladies and strap-ons going, well, what do you think of that, huh? Do you masturbate? Tell me about it. No. No. And then, oh my God, the scene where they had the girl and she went to her friend's house. They're so obviously set up. And of course, just to like drill it into your head that this girl that she's seeing is like heterosexual or whatever. They have her, she has like a freaking dick mug. She has sex on the walls. Then she's sitting there talking about vibrators and shit. And I'm like... This is so heavy handed and of course it's still like, well how about masturbation? Let's talk about masturbation. And it's like Honestly, what the hell? Who the people who made this obviously weren't asexual. Obviously. It was honestly I was so so appalled. Oh, and one more thing, okay? So I was talking to them for a really long time. They know that I was a speaker. They had so many people there who had like written books on asexuality. They had people there who had been involved in activism for so many years, who were at all the prides all over the country. And it was such a missed opportunity that they only decided to focus on a small select group of white children. And it was even more disappointing the way that they edited me. I was speaking for a long time. We've been in correspondence for a long time. And the one part that they include on my face is me sitting there going, why include that? Are you trying to make it look like I was crying? Why would you include that? 
I wasn't freaking crying and it's so annoying. This is like literal fake news because on the day I got eyeliner in my eye and I was like, oh my God, there's eyeliner in my eye. And we were like laughing about it and we paused the conversation and someone gave me a napkin because my eye was watering and I dabbed my eye and then I was like, all right, thank you. We can continue. And that was all it was. I didn't think that they were going to like zoom in on that one moment where I'm like, oh my God. God. and then make it look like I was crying and then include that one part in the documentary and then the only line they include from the, that I said was oh yeah the asexual spectrum is like way more diverse than people think it is but they don't build upon that it's like we're just going to include this part so we can say that we've mentioned that there's more than what we're showing but we're not going to show you because we don't actually want to show you anything to do with asexuality we just want to show you the undateables asexual edition and it sucks even their closing sentiment was just an example of how shallow and vapid this show was. Honestly, I'm, I'm so disappointed. And again, again, I promise, I'm not trying to knock the people who did it. I'm not knocking Ashley, if that's your name. I'm not knocking... Um, I should have checked her name before I made this video. I'm sorry, because I met her. I'm pretty sure I met a few people in this at the conference. I just... I just, I just expect better. I do. And that's why I'm making this. Because if they're, if BBC Free can have my face in something that I don't like and I don't really agree with, then I can use my platform to, to call them out and to give a whole different side to this whole situation because it's not fair. I'm just, I'm just so unhappy with it. And I, and I can't keep it inside me. It's been 24 hours and it's already too long. And, uh, I'm, I'm gonna make it known, you know? I'm gonna make it known that I really don't like this. And again, if you do like this, then that is great, good for you. But we need to aim higher, guys. Don't settle for less just because asexual people don't get any representation at all. We just serve better than to be portrayed as a bunch of people who just can't get dates. That's not all that asexuality is. We're not just a bunch of people who don't want sex. We're not all white. We're not all young. We're not all in exactly the same situation. And we're not all just struggling to find our other halves. That isn't what life is about. And that isn't like, I mean, yeah, maybe for some asexual people, that's like a sincere problem for you. But there are also loads of aromantic people who couldn't care less. And that should be shown as well. Stop trying to make us out to be sob stories. That's what bothers me so much and I hope that you guys can see why I made this and you're not just going to think that I'm a hater and you're not all going to crucify me on social media now. And if you don't hate me, I'm going to shoehorn this in. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Follow me. Eh. Follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is at the Yasmin Benoit. That's where I post a lot of stuff related to my activism and my modeling. I write articles, I do videos, I do events and stuff. I was speaking at Reading Pride 2018 this year as they're like token asexual. If you need a token black asexual for your events, like the one I have coming up for Asexuality Awareness Week next month at Cambridge University, then you guys, you know, come at me. Don't come at me just to cry at me because of what I said, please. At the Yasmin Benoit. And by the way, this really cute shirt, this is from Redressed Apparel. Isn't it freaking adorable? And I'm pretty sure that if you use my discount code, which I think is Yasmin B, then you can get a discount on this adorable shirt. Isn't it cute? Okay. They're probably not going to appreciate me including their brand in this video if it's really unpopular. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching. Please don't be offended. I love you. Mwah. Goodbye.